First of all, guys, The Witcher season two is amazing. I am so surprised how good this show is, especially since the first season was amazing. So this show is phenomenal. Now, uh, Anya and Mimi, first question I have is for you guys. Um, how do your relationships to the Lodge of Sorceress uh, shift in the wake of the first season's battle? I think kind of true to lie, the people you can have the biggest friction with are actually people um, you are naturally drawn to or you like something in them and you might not have it yourself. And I think that's what Fringella's draw is to Yennefer. Um, and so just doing those scenes with Anya and being able to explore that, I love it. I love their dynamic and I love what they bring out in each other. Um, and I want more of it, but yeah. <laughs> So in this season, we, we do just get to see more of Yennefer and Fringilla. And I think that's a really important dynamic for the show because they know so much of each other's experience and yet they still can't get on board with each other or influence each other in the ways that I think they can both influence each other. You know, they don't, um, they don't, uh, uh, but we, we, I suppose we, they do learn from each other in the end. I think this season you, you kind of, you realise that actually Fringilla on her own path has kind of learned a lot from Yennefer and vice versa in that, that kind of really important moment at the beginning of season two. Now, uh, Joey, can you talk to me about where we find your character at the start of season two and how his relationship is explored with Yennefer? Uh, Yasuke, we find him, uh, well, we find him a bit more famous, but a bit more confident in some ways. He's uh, hunted for fame and for glory and for money f for most of his life. And I think for the first time, he's now realizing that that's not what he, he craves. That's not what he needs. He's looking for uh, looking to belong and looking for a, a family and looking for stories to, uh, to tell. And, and I think there is a, a small connection between um, Yennefer and Yaskia that's blossoming, that's blooming. Um, I think that you know they're still mortal frenemies, but the um, but it's it means that we get to see a, a, a more vulnerable side to Yaskia, a Yaskia that perhaps is leaving his ego at the door, um, and in order to open himself up to to new people and let people in. And I think uh, that's what was most rewarding for me shooting season two. Awesome. Now, maybe what do you think Frangilla's biggest strength is uh, as she goes into the season that at least at the start is a tricky place for the character. I think at the start of season two, her biggest positive is that she's willing to listen. She's willing to listen to outside influences and she's willing to trust that when she doubts something, there might be a reason for it. Um, and she doesn't have to stick to the same line just because she said whatever she said in the past. I think that's a really good thing for her. Um, yeah. It's amazing. That's now, Anya what did you want to bring to the role of Yennefer this season that wasn't necessarily on the page? Oh, um, a lot of Yennefer's journey isn't necessarily kind of um, in the books. Uh, so we create a lot of it. Um, I think in terms of the, our scripts, I, I feel like it was all there for, for me. I think it always is. Um, there's a lot more kind of I, I suppose with Yennefer this season, I wanted to, to be a bit more considered. I wanted to consider things a lot more and um, not be so quick to kind of judge and uh, to, to listen more, to, to learn more, um, to be more open to other people. She makes an unlikely alliance this season that really changed the perspective on things. Um, she definitely matures this season. I wanted to, to show that growth. Well, look, guys, amazing job on this season. It is fantastic. I can't wait for everyone to see it this Friday. Thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>